Is it possible that the world surrounds us with the conventional paradigm, a matrix about our origins and history of life on Earth, a reality matrix reinforced by education, movies, television, museums, and secular institutions, one that entirely discounts the credibility of biblical history as plainly written? Is it also possible that this worldview has slipped into many Christian colleges that have morphed biblical truth to be relevant to the culture of today? Join us now as we look at seven myths that the world and even many of today's Christian colleges espouse. These include, while the Bible may be inspired by God, it's not inerrant and parts of it are just myth. The Bible's account of creation is only metaphorical. The six creation days were not ordinary days, and creation really unfolded over millions of years. Genesis 1 and 2 provide two different accounts of creation. Adam and Eve were not real people, only allegorical figures in the story of human evolution. The Bible's account of Noah's flood is just myth and was drawn from writings from the ancient Near East. Moses did not actually write the first five books of the Bible, and dinosaurs died out millions of years ago, did not walk with man, and are not mentioned in the Bible. Before exploring these, let's first look at why these topics even matter. Jesus said we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. Yes, we see plenty of Christians today who are passionate about their faith. But when it comes to being committed to the validity and truth of the Bible, sometimes their minds are just not on board, weakening their Christian walk. Many Christians today aren't quite sure what to do with the obvious claims of the Bible, such as creation, the flood, and the many other miracles that even Christ himself taught as real historical events. Many students are dragging their minds far behind in their walk of faith, being surrounded by the competing views offered by worldly entertainment and secular institutions and education, where they are subjected to 250 pages of evolution teaching over 50 classroom hours before they even graduate high school. Scripture even promised that scoffers would come to suppress the truth and try to deliberately forget creation and the flood. The biblical account of God speaking creation into existence is replaced with the secular view of deep time and random processes. Similarly, Noah's flood is replaced with long, slow, uniformitarian ideas. Because these competing views create dissonance in their minds, many Christians are living a half-hearted faith, some without even knowing it. Many times, this problem gets compounded when they attend Christian colleges that place the Bible on equal footing with ancient Near East mythology, spin the creation and flood accounts every which way, and turn Adam and Eve into myths or allegories. To cope with these challenges, many Christians become theistic evolutionists, hoping to reconcile their Christianity with what their professors or classmates believe. Students don't want others to think they are closed-minded or simple by holding beliefs that appear to be fairy tales by modern thinkers. Other students deal with these challenges by compartmentalizing their Christianity as their spiritual side or even identifying as New Testament Christians. All this because they don't believe that the Christian faith is based on real history, beginning with the first page of the Bible. Would Christians live out their faith with more boldness if they really believe that the Bible is true, both theologically and historically? if their hearts, souls, and minds were all in? What would happen if Jesus came to earth and took 100 doubting Christians into a theater and played a movie that replayed history from the beginning? Creation Week, the Flood, and major biblical events that happened after, all the way to today. Would those Christians leave the theater and return to life as usual? Certainly not. This is because evidence that confirms God's word translates into a committed belief in one's mind in this belief emboldens Christians to live faith-filled lives. Fully believing and obeying God's word also opens the door to blessing. No, we're not promoting prosperity teaching here. We're talking about what happens when a person makes a conscious decision to order their lives after biblical teaching and makes choices that align with God's word. For God will not be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he will also reap. We're talking about Christians getting onto the right train tracks for their lives and journeying to their ideal destinations because they're living their lives in ways that honor God and His Word. Today's youth are only going to follow God's Word if they believe it to be true in its claims. No one's going to submit to a book of fairy tales. This is exactly why biblical apologetics is important, beginning with the first book of the Bible. Let's look at it this way. Christians believe that Jesus rose from the dead. How do we know it happened? We weren't there. We can't go back and watch a rerun of it. We get that belief from the Bible. But wait, scientists today would say that a person can't rise from the dead. 
So, shouldn't we reinterpret this event and say that it wasn't really a bodily resurrection? Same with the virgin birth, the miracles Christ performed. Most Christians would say, of course not. But that's exactly what a lot of Christians do with Genesis. It's the same thing. Many Christians have no problem affirming the New Testament miracles of Christ. But when we get to the creation account in Genesis, where he created in six days, drew man from dust and Eve from his side, many say, oh no, science says otherwise. So, it can't be so. They don't believe what the Bible says because of what modern scientists say. So, they reinterpret the Bible. Once we unlock that door, we unleash the same attack that Satan made on Eve, questioning, did God really say? This attack, did God really say, was so effective in the garden that the enemy still uses it today. Evolution over millions of years, eight men, no life after death. These ideas lead people to question, doubt, then ultimately reject God's word. If people won't believe the history of the Bible, this undermines the authority of the Bible, and the gospel is based in that very authority. If we cannot trust the Bible's history, why would we believe what it says about salvation? If people won't believe Genesis 1, why believe John 3.16? Jesus even said, I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? These challenges represent a key stumbling block to the gospel of Jesus Christ for many people today. The Bible also stresses that we should not be cheated by those in the world who tout philosophies that follow the traditions and basic principles of this world, rather than on Christ and His Word. Indeed, the wisdom of God has made foolish the wisdom of this world, since the world through wisdom did not know God, with many being led astray and deceived by the so-called science of each generation. Such wisdom of this world draws back into the mystery of unseen, unproven deep time to frame the theory of evolution, far beyond when we can use true science, that which we can observe, measure, and repeat to test such ideas. Finally, these topics are not important so we can have the satisfaction of winning arguments. Rather, they are important because believing in the clear message of the Bible firmly grounds and roots a person's faith, allowing them to build their lives in the solid, rich ground of God's Word and base their life decisions and choices in ways that are aligned with the Bible. Trees that have roots that drill deep into the soil draw life-giving nutrients and establish a firm grounding for when the storms come. Trees that start growing roots but hit a blockage that stunts their growth will not be able to access all the intended nutrients the tree will need to be healthy and fruitful. It will also not be strongly rooted to stand against the storms and testings that come. The leaves and fruit that are visible on the outside of a tree are a reflection of the invisible roots that are beneath the tree. Christians who place their trust deeply in God's Word, trusting it back to the beginning in Genesis will draw life-giving strength for their lives and will not sway and uproot when false teaching and challenges come. The fruitfulness of our lives and our daily choices and behaviors all stem from what we believe about God and His Word. The very first psalm in the Bible promises that if we delight in the law of the Lord and meditate on His law day and night, that we will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth our fruit in season, and that our leaves shall not wither, and whatever we do will prosper. All of these come from meditating and revering God's law, which is the set of the first five books in the Old Testament, beginning with Genesis. How deep do your roots go? Are you a Christian student looking for answers about what the Bible teaches about creation, the fossil record, dinosaurs? Download the Genesis Apologetics app from the iTunes or Google Play stores for answers to these questions and more.